It's a pleasure to have with us today Willie Galloway, author of the new book Grow, Cook, Eat and the blog Dig in Food. Thank you for joining us, Willie. Thank you for having me at the plant farm. You're welcome. Willie, why is the soil the foundation for your secret to growing tasty vegetables? Well, you know, the soil is the home of your plants. Um, so it's the roots, it's kind of where it's at. And okay. in the soil, they get all the oxygen they need, all the water and uh, all the nutrients. So okay. it's really important to build good soil because it's the home of your plants and, and it's, um, it's just crucial to their health and development. Okay, um, tell us the secret to growing tasty vegetables with your three simple steps for building good soil. Yeah, so there's pretty much three things that I like to do. And, and the first is to um, add compost. Um, the second is to use a good granulated organic fertilizer, okay. unlike Espoma's Garden Tone is a good one. Okay. And then um, also you want to keep your soil covered up in winter. Oh, um, okay. Because we have such rainy winters that if the soil is bare, um, the rain just beats it down and actually can compact it. Oh, okay. And it leaches out a lot of nutrients. So yeah. the nutrients in the soil, the rain just washes them down below the root zone. And so it's really important to cover up your soil. So okay. I have kind of a, an easy way to do that. What I do is in fall, I take garden material, so grass clippings and vegetables that are done that didn't have any pest or disease problems. And okay. I, I chop those up, I run my mower over them. Okay. <laughs> so it's like little pieces. And then I take uh, leaves mm -hmm. and I chop those up too with, with the mower. And then um, I layer that over my bed about this steep. Okay. And then I put burlap on top of that. Oh. And so over the winter, it decomposes and tons of worms get under there. Gotcha. And in spring, you just pull off the burlap, you've got compost right where you need it, oh. and you can plant. So that's really helpful. And then I usually also, um, before I put in seedlings or seeds, I scratch in some of the granulated organic fertilizer. Okay, awesome, yeah. great. So that's a pretty easy way to do it. Good. Um, and uh, what are the five favorite multi-purpose edibles uh, for spring and summer? Well, first I just want to say what a multi-purpose edible is. Sure, and yes. So that's that's a crop where you have, you know, sort of the main crop that you're used to harvesting, and then there's extra delicious things that the plant makes that you can eat. Okay. So my first favorite is peas. Okay. So clearly you can eat pea pods, you know, yeah. with snap peas and sugar snap peas, and then the seeds with mm -hmm. English peas. So most people know that, but you can also harvest the greens, which are so good. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you can use them in salads or stir fries. You just pinch them back. Uh -huh. They regrow. Okay. And they're amazing. Oh, so yeah. Peas That's are awesome. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Yeah. These are great. <laughs> um, I also love radishes. Okay. So clearly you eat the radish root. And right. if you don't like radishes, you should really try them roasted. Oh. Just toss them in olive oil and sea salt and roast them until they're tender, about 10 minutes in a hot oven. Okay. And it's really good. Yeah. But you can also eat their greens okay and you don't want to eat those in a salad they have this kind of velcro texture that oh, turns oh some people okay off. <laughs> don't eat them in a salad Cook okay them like you would spinach okay um, and then they're just a really great green they're full of iron and calcium and um, oh, super helpful uh -huh. and um so i love those you can also eat their seed pods oh and their flowers when they flower really so yeah a okay. whole radish plant it's really delicious <laughs> then i like kale okay a lot of times I grow kale over the winter, and then in spring, yeah. it gets these flower buds. Oh. You know, it gets kind of tall, and it gets these little buds that look like broccoli. At that point, most people pull their kale out and put it in the compost pile, which is such yeah. a waste <laughs> because those little buds are really good. Oh, okay. Um, you can just cook them just like you would broccoli rob or, mm -hmm. or broccolini, yeah. and they have little kale leaves on there. Oh. It's so good. Yummy. So, okay. Um, I love kale. Um, dill. Mm -hmm. I mean... Every part of the dill plant is used for pickles, right? Yeah, so right. The, the leaves, the seeds, the flowers, those are awesome. Uh -huh. And then, um, gosh, one more. Cilantro? Oh, cilantro. Yeah. Yes. I love cilantro. So, um, okay, so cilantro kind of, you know, divides people into two camps. People who yeah. love it and people who totally yes. hate it. Um, I have a divided household. My husband yeah. really doesn't like cilantro. <laughs> Um, but it, cilantro also produces seeds, which are the spice coriander. Oh, right. Okay. And so the spice doesn't take like the leaves at all. No. And the green coriander seed is amazing, super citrusy and just delicious. Oh, so, yay. So um, even if you don't like cilantro, it's worth growing yeah. coriander. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much for stopping by and sharing with us with us today, Willie. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you.